Hello everyone and welcome back to our top 10 favorite series. This is the next video in the installment of my top five favorite series. For most of the other episodes here, we've been talking about different uh, colors across different brands, what my favorite versions of each of those colors are. And today we have run out of colors and we are gonna start talking about supplies. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about watercolor brushes and the top five format didn't exactly fit this one. Neither did a ranking system since different brushes are used for different things. So today I'm gonna be telling you about some of my favorite brushes across different types of watercolor brushes. They are in no particular order in terms of favorites, but I will explain where they fall in terms of my daily use. Today I'm going to be showing you a card that shows some different brush exercises on it. Now, it was really hard to come up with an idea of what to show you while I'm talking about all these brushes, so I did record the same type of footage for each brush, but it's a really uh, important disclaimer to put here at the beginning of the video that these tests are not necessarily appropriate for all the brushes that I'm showing you. And of course, I will mention that when we get there. So at the top of this swatch card, we have a fine line test. So that's the smallest line that I could get with the brushes, as well as I tried in a lot of cases to see how far I could stretch the water that was in the barrel of the brush. Next up, we have the brush kind of at its full thickness. Uh, when you press down kind of as hard as you can, it within reason on a brush and uh, this is the stroke that you get and then that is followed by going from thin to thick lines we've got a gradient wash so that's where we start with the darkest color and fade it out to a light color I have some fine line kind of flicky type type lines then we also have uh, me trying to dry brush with uh, a more concentrated pigment on the right hand side of that little row there we've got what it looks like when you take the brush and just quickly move it across the page when it's laying almost completely on its side and at the very bottom we've got a flat wash test that fills up a good portion of the page and after that dries we will have a lifting test and a glazing test so I hope that this is fun for you. Sorry, the intro was a little bit long, but let's go ahead and jump on into my top 10 favorite brushes. We are coincidentally gonna be starting off this video with my favorite travel brush, which is also my favorite water brush. This is the Pentel Aquash. It comes in three different sizes that I know of. Um, my favorite is the medium one. If you would like to learn more about watercolor brushes, I do have a whole separate video on that that I will link up in the iCard, and I'll try and remember to put a link in the description as well. And I absolutely love these brushes because of the versatility. They let out the pigment incredibly evenly, and of course they hold water in the barrel which help them uh, disperse water evenly. It is a little bit harder to get a dry brush effect out of this brush since water is constantly flowing out of the barrel, but if you wipe it off really well on a rag, you can usually get an okay texture there. So when we're doing the gradient wash here, you're gonna see it smooths across the page really, really well. There is another test on this one and the next brush, which is some brush lettering, just so you can see how it performs there. And as you can see, it's not the traditional way to do a flat wash, but if you work quick enough, you can get a flat wash out of this little brush. You can see it's pretty good at lifting and it will We'll move the pigment around a little bit when you are trying to do a glaze, but that is going to be the nature of any stiff haired kind of synthetic bristles. Next up, we have my favorite detail brush, and this is a new brush for me. I used to use a Princeton Heritage, but recently I got this Escota Perla, and it is dreamy. It gets so nice and very thin. I was dipping in between those three lines at the very top, and you can see here when I try and get a little bit wider that this brush does not hold a whole lot of pigment and water, but that's because it is so super teeny tiny at a size two. We can get some really good brush lettering and some great dry brush effects out of it because it holds so little water. And if we're careful enough, we can get a little gradient going. Now, this is not an ideal tool to be doing a whole flat wash out of in the size like this, but you can see that I actually was able to get a somewhat flat wash by tipping my paper and making sure the bead of water was always sitting at the bottom of that. It does pain me a little bit to try and do any lifting with this brush because it is so delicate and small and I want to make sure to keep the point as nice and fine as possible, but because it's a stiff synthetic material, I am able to pull up uh, pigment quite well with it. I can do a glaze, but similarly to the water brush, um, it does have a, a stiffer bristle on it, so it will pick up the underlayer just a tiny bit, especially if you're working on a student grade paper like this. Now I know that I have a lot of new viewers from the vegan watercolor guide that I just did or people who have been with me for a long time who asked for that guide and I wish that I could tell you guys that this was an evil brush and don't use it because it's natural hair, yada, yada, yada. 
But unfortunately, I cannot do that with a, a good conscious. Even though I wouldn't buy myself a natural hairbrush, this one was a gift from a viewer and it is absolutely gorgeous to work with. Um, it's probably one of the best performing brushes. I have to admit, I don't use it very often because I'm afraid of damaging it, although I know that they are pretty hardy. Um, it just gets the most beautiful fine lines, the most beautiful detail. It's fantastic for fur texture. This brush has a fantastic even distribution of pigment uh, across doing those varied line widths, and it is great for whipping up a large flat wash in no time. The only thing I don't love about this brush is that you saw at the beginning of the little clip here is that because it's a reversible pocket brush, the cap is meant to go back over on top of it so it doesn't get damaged and that connection doesn't really set up very firmly. So the barrel um, can come off fairly easily. You want to make sure you're being really careful with that. And it also feels a little hollow in your hand. Um, you're going to see me here trying to use this to lift and it almost like killed me to do this because it is such a delicate brush that I wouldn't do that. I kept it very carefully on its side and I absolutely do not recommend to ever use this type of brush to scrub your paper, get a cheap synthetic for that. Following our sable brush, I have a synthetic Kalinsky sable brush, or at least that's what they claim to be. This is from Escoda Versatile and this is my favorite brush for control. The one that I have is in a size eight and why I say kind of supposedly mimics the Kalinske is that I don't find that this handles the same way at all as the, um, the sable that I have. The sable is soft and supple and beautiful and delicate. And the Escoda is what I grab when I just need something that is ready to go, that I don't mind roughing up a bit, that can take a little bit of abuse, that is pretty good at scrubbing as you'll later see in this video clip. And this is just all around what I go to when I need something that isn't too juicy, that I need to be reliable and that I can really expect consistent results from. You can see that I am able to get pretty fine lines. And then when we move into our uh, thicker lines, you will see on either end that there's a little bit of extra dispersion of the pigment at the starting and at the tail ends. That is something that I do look for in my brushes that I want a nice even dispersal throughout that swatch with. So it loses a little bit of merit for that. But again, like I said, this is a really reliable, consistent brush that I can go to for just about anything. So we talked about a Kalinsky. We talked about a synthetic Kalinsky that didn't really act like a Kalinsky. And this has got to be my favorite synthetic Kalinsky that actually acts more like that natural hair that you'd be looking for. This is the Princeton Elite and I have a large size 12 of these. That is probably one of the larger brushes I use. A lot of my paintings are smaller formats, so I don't have a big use for a lot of these brush sizes that are oversized 10. But this one is, you can see, um, I have paint stuck in the ferrule there. It is a well-loved and used brush. Um, over time, it's lost its point a little bit, so it's not quite as fine as it once was, but you can still get a relatively smooth line out of it, although there is going to be an extra pigmentation at the beginning and ending of your stroke, as you can see in the varied line widths here. It is great for doing graded washes. You can get some really neat side of brush effects. You can make large washes. It's good at lifting. Um, all around, it's just a really nice brush to use, and I like this line a lot. The next category of brushes that I have is my favorite synthetic Taclon brush. This is one that I admittedly don't use very much, but I don't know why I don't use it very much because whenever I do use it, I really enjoy the experience. This one is from Low Cornell. It's a size 10 round and it comes to an incredibly fine point tip. This is a brush that will give you incredibly fine lines and nice big broad strokes. Although when we get to our thin to thick line here, you are gonna see that there is quite a discrepancy in the amount of pigment that it disperses along the page depending on the pressure that you put on the brush. So that is one thing to note. It does handle your gradients pretty well. You can get some really nice dry brush effects and it can cover big areas for washes. It is okay at doing your lifting and okay at doing your glazing. So I, overall, I think this is a really nice all-purpose brush, similarly to a silver black velvet with just a little bit of a different spin and all obviously on the synthetic side of things. My favorite all around brush is the silver black velvet and I have this size eight is the largest one that I have of my round brushes. I could probably easily go up to a size 10 as well. This brush comes to an incredibly, incredibly fine tip and has a nice big juicy barrel. It is both a squirrel and synthetic squirrel blend. So when I said I didn't have a lot to compare the Kalinsky to, I don't, although I did purchase um, some of these silver black velvet brushes before I knew that they were actually a blend. I thought they 
they were fully synthetic squirrel before I got them. That being said, this is another brush that just all the way around performs absolutely phenomenally. You can get really, really fine lines. You can get incredibly consistent uh, pigment dispersal when you're going down in these big flat strokes or even when you're varied strokes, there's very little uh, change in the pigment load. You can get nice graded washes. You can get really, really fine uh, pointed flicks, although the dry brushing is a little bit more hard because the squirrels are meant to absorb a lot more water, so um, it is a little harder to get a, a little bit more on the dry side. You can still get a really nice texture when you hold it on its side, and it's fantastic for doing large washes. If you told me that I could only use one brush for the rest of my life and made me pick a favorite, this would probably be it just for its all around versatility. It is uh, pretty hard to pick up pigment with this when you're doing your lifting test because it is such a soft brush. I would definitely recommend you use your synthetic uh, like nylon brushes or your synthetic Kalinskis even to go ahead and pick up this pigment rather than using a squirrel brush, which is soft and delicate and juicy and meant to hold a lot of water. For all those same reasons, it is excellent at glazing. It's not gonna disturb, disturb the layers underneath uh, that you have been working on. And there was one little thing that I wanted to show you here, a close up of when I was trying to do the lifting on my paper. The brush has a tendency to kind of do these little splatters that are not very controllable. So that is just one thing to mention. It didn't happen on any of my other swatches, but it did happen in this one and I wanted to show it to you. If you are a messy splattery painter, it's not gonna matter at all probably, but if you're a really, really controlled fine painter, this might not be the brush for you. So moving on from Silver Black Velvet, which is the half and half blend of real and synthetic hair, we have a fully synthetic version of a squirrel brush. This is a quill, um, and I have a little asterisk next to the size six because quills are sized differently than round brushes. And you can see here that the quill is much, much larger than my size eight round Silver Black Velvet brush. Now Princeton Neptune does make round brushes as well, but I do have to warn you that these do not have the most reliable tips. I got one that was a really big dud that doesn't have a tip at all. I contacted the company a long time ago. They were great. They sent me some new products to replace the one that wasn't working very well, although that one also didn't have a super fine point either. This brush is huge and juicy, and these tests that I've set up to kind of test the other brushes that I have here are not applicable for this one. This brush deserves to be painted on a large piece of paper that I'm sorry I'm not showing you here, although I do have another watercolor brush video that I do show you just the sheer amount of water that this brush can hold. I'll go ahead and put that link up in the iCard above. You're not gonna be able to get much of a dry brush effect out of this at all, um, just because of the size, unless you really, really, really wring it out, or uh, I don't know, it would be hard to do that. Um, you're not gonna get much varied texture on the sides, but that is not what this brush is for. It's for covering large areas, going from beautifully thin to nice and thick. Please, please, please do not try and use this brush to do any type of lifting. I don't think it is suited for that purpose whatsoever. Although because of its beautiful softness, it is great at glazing once again in large areas. Now, as we move towards the end of this video, I do have a couple of brushes that I don't use very often, but I know if I left them out, you guys would be asking questions saying, where are the flat brushes? So I have my favorite wash brush here that I don't use very often. And I have to admit, I don't have very many of them. I do have a half inch Grumbacher that I have just put through the ringer because it is used for each and every one of my swatch cards for my swatch binder, um, but it is not very good at covering large areas. So for this purpose, I have a silver black velvet size three quarter quarter inch flat brush. I believe, uh, I was trying to remember where I got this one from, I believe Ophelia sent it to me. I ended up buying some core paints off of her that I'm going to be working on a video very shortly here to put up on the channel, and she snuck this in the package to me. So thank you, Ophelia, if you indeed were the one that sent it to me. I'm pretty sure that my memory is not failing me there. Um, this is, of course, very similar to the silver black velvet that we saw earlier, meaning that it has a lot of the same qualities like being soft and juicy. It is a half and half synthetic and real hair uh, blend. And this one's really neat too, because it has a little, um, like an angled end to the hard plastic of the brush, which allows you to do some scoring on your paper if you'd like to do that. That isn't a technique that I implement uh, pretty much ever, but if you wanna see more on that, I know Lindsay the Frugal Crafter has a, a, included in a lot of her videos. Once again, the little tests that I'm doing are not well suited for this brush because it is such a 
uh, specific purpose and because I honestly don't really know how to handle a flat brush all that well. I use rounds almost exclusively. I love them and uh, I'm really excited to be using this one more. Again, I just got it recently, so um, I'm looking forward to using it in some of my larger format pieces to cover a very wide range of background areas. The last of our official top 10 brushes that I have in this video is another flat brush. This is a half inch angle brush and I put this under the category of being my favorite vegan water brush. Again, favorite being a little bit loose here because I don't have a lot of vegan brushes to compare it to or at least not that I know of. Um, however, Colors of Nature uh, sent me those paints to try out for the channel and write the vegan review for and everything. And then Melody, one of my viewers, sent me an assortment of these to try out, which I'm very appreciative for. Thank you so much. These brushes are made with a an unfinished wood handle so there's no varnish on them whatsoever the inks on them are a food-based ink they don't use any animal glue in the ferrule whatsoever the brushes are synthetic um, so on and so forth so these are very eco-friendly brushes if you want to go that way I think I'm drawn to this one in particular out of the set because I've been wanting to try an angle for quite a long time. Uh, if you guys know Maria here on YouTube who does all those beautiful water tutorial, water color tutorials, I can talk, I promise. Um, she uses a lot of angle brushes, so I'm really excited to be trying this out and I've been using it a little bit more than the other ones in that set. However, there are going to be some drawbacks to this specific brush. Um, it does have a very uneven dispersal, so you'll notice on that straight line across the page, it's very dark at the beginning and tapers off to be very light, which means it dropped all of its pigment at the beginning. Same thing for when we go thin to thick. It had a harder time doing a gradient wash, although it was really useful for doing a flat wash since you're able to pull down the pigment so nice and evenly. You can get really, really crisp, clean lifting lines with a brush like this just due to its shape and its overall stiffness. And uh, glazing, for the same reasons, will be a little bit more difficult. Now, I do have to say that they market this brush as a faux squirrel, which I don't quite understand because it's a fairly stiff brush. And here I'm just showing you the comparison. I know the bristles are a different length and this isn't a completely fair comparison, but I'm just trying to show you how much the Colors of Nature brush snaps back into place more similar how I would describe uh, the, the faux Kalinskis or just even a faux synthetic brush, whereas the squirrel kind of is floppier and takes uh, a little bit more time returning to its natural shape. And the softness in person, if you could feel it, the squirrel hair is much, much softer. Now I mentioned that last brush was the last official of my top 10 because that was 10 brushes that we talked about, but I do have one bonus here to throw in with you because it's me and you know that I can't just stick to a top five or top 10 list like I'm supposed to. And that is that I wanted to include a value brush. All these other brushes you would buy singly or maybe in some higher end sets. Uh, but for those of you who are just dabbling in watercolors or want uh, an inexpensive um, brush to start off with so you're not investing a whole lot, I have to recommend the Grace Art Practice brushes. These are available on Amazon. There's a set of 12 um, that comes with six rounds and six flats and it is like $7. So I don't know how they're able to do this. I don't know if I wanna know how they're able to offer these prices. The handles, like the Colors of Nature, are unfinished wood, but the bristles are actually really great for the price point. It is a golden taclon, but the rounds all come to this beautiful fine tip. Um, they perform really, really well. They hold enough water to make it worth your while. Comparatively to some of the other brushes that we've seen on this list, it actually has a pretty nice dispersion rate here with a little bit more pigment being dispersed when you have a downstroke or a stiffer stroke. It creates a beautiful dry brush effect and it is also good at washes. So I don't know what more you could ask for out of a really, really inexpensive brush. And I would recommend these to any beginner who just wants to start off and maybe try some different brush sizes before they commit to their favorite size in the more expensive brands. They go all the way down to a size two up to a size 12. The 12 is the one that I'm showing in this, this feature. So you can see the capabilities of the largest brush in the pack. So that is going to do it for our top 10 favorite brushes. Again, this wasn't a countdown. They weren't in any particular order. I hope that the little blurbs that I said on each brush were helpful. If you wanna see more information on brushes, again, as I mentioned before, I have a watercolor brush video where you can just see me kind of using different brushes in real time, although it is a little bit outdated. So let me know if you'd like to see an updated video in that type of format. And then I also have my water brush tutorial and guide so um, I can, you can go to that by using the iCards uh, above in the right hand corner. So we're just gonna finish out this video showing you some close-ups of the photos of each of these different swatch cards if you wanted to see their 
kind of personalities shine through a little bit more. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite brush is. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but of course this is limited to the brushes that I have tried. So I know a lot of you have favorite brushes that I don't own or haven't used, and I can't comment on those because I don't know anything about them. So I'm not saying that these are the only top 10 brushes worth your time. There are more out there that I have not experienced, but again, help each other out. Let us know in the comments below what some of your favorite brushes are, uh, the ones that you've used in the past. And uh, yeah, I hope that you guys are having fun down there in the comments section. Thank you guys for watching this. Be sure to come back next week where we talk about, I haven't decided yet. It'll either be watercolor brands or watercolor journals. So you can let me know in the comments below which one of those you'd rather see. I'm not quite ready to do my papers yet. I need a little bit more time for that one. So. They're all coming. We're going to have fun with them. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. So I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will see you all next week.